Hello, I've just been playing the Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition, which certainly sounds very impressive and will be perhaps interesting to you for one of two reasons. First of all, Reaper of Souls is... This is the first time it'll be on the consoles together with Diablo 3 in a perfect union. And second of all, uh, it's now going to be available on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, whereas the previous version, previous console version, was only for the 360 and PlayStation 3. Uh, so yeah, if those two things don't sound very interesting, then this isn't really going to change your mind about Diablo 3 as a game, because fundamentally it's still pretty much the same thing. There are a couple of interesting extra bits and pieces, and we'll get onto that in just a sec. But yeah, it works largely the same as that previous console version. So that means that your skills are mapped to your con controller in a way that makes sense, but also limits how many con skills you can use at once. Um, you have a dedicated roll button, which is exciting for all sorts of reasons. And it supports local co-op play, which is pretty decent when there's a couple of you and a little bit hectic when you're, you're playing with four people. Um, mainly because the more enemies appear and also because you really do lose track of where your character is. In fact, in in that original console version, you had to use your pressing the right stick on your controller to make a big colored arrow appear over where your character is. Still has some of the complaints that the original local co-op did, so you are limited to playing on one screen, although the camera does zoom out and give you a little bit of flexibility there. And also, if you need to delve into the menus to look at skills or remap them or, or even look a little bit more in depth at some of the items that you've picked up, that pauses the game for everyone. Not too bad when there's just two players. Frustrating when you're playing with three of your friends on the same couch. Other than that, there are a few new features. First of all, I think probably the most interesting one is something called Nemesis Mode, which even when you're playing a single player game just on your own, and you're killed by an enemy, a mob, that mob will appear in one of your friend's games, um, even if they're playing single player as well. And there'll be an elite enemy, and it will be called Brat's Nemesis, or whatever the case may be. And if they kill that nemesis, then you both get a little reward. Or if that nemesis kills them, then it gets even stronger and goes to another friend's list. And yeah, that cycle continues. Thankfully, there is a cap on how strong that enemy can become, otherwise things would get really, really silly. But it's a nice little feature. Something that we'd actually probably like to see in the PC version. I did ask whether or not that would be the case, but the answer was a bit vague. Um, yeah, I the, the relationship between the PC version and the console versions is just a bit vague in general, really. Post-support is another topic that has been mentioned earlier today, and... Um, Judging by Blizzard's reputation, you'd imagine they want to keep supporting that game on on the console versions as they do with the PC, particularly if they are they're going to think of another Diablo 3 expansion later down the line. It makes sense to keep that audience happy and keep the trust there. Um, but it wasn't something that they will uh, confirm either way. Going back to some of the new features in this Ultimate Evil Edition, there is an, a gifting system that's been worked in. So as you kill enemies, there's a small chance that you'll pick up something that is designated as a gift for someone on your friends list, and you can send it pretty easily whilst you're there without going back to the town. As far as I'm aware, we didn't actually see this in the demo we played. You are attached to your friends who are also playing it on the console, if you have friends that are playing it on the same consoles as you. The loot system that I mentioned in the local co-op side of things has actually been reworked a little bit and you have a little bit more control over sorting through the items you pick up, dropping them, exchanging them with other people, equipping them on the fly without having to bring up that menu and pause the game for everyone, which is certainly a welcome change. And finally, it does. It seems like the combat in this game encourages even less downtime than usual. Diablo 3 really isn't a game about standing still and waiting for too long. It's about running around, smacking things in the face and picking up lovely shiny purple objects. Yeah, even more so in this Ultimate Evil Edition, you have a kind of combo system that works into racking up lots of kills, how you use traps to um, take out enemies, and you're rewarded for killing lots of enemies really quickly without uh, waiting around too much. So yeah, the, I think out of all the versions of Diablo 3 I played, this one more than any of the others is just about flinging yourself towards enemies and playing as quickly as possible and just keeping the focus on action rather than the more 
careful side of things that it, it doesn't want you to spend too long in the menus and it doesn't want you to spend too long standing around thinking about where you should go next. You should be hitting things with over-the-top dramatic moves. Other than that, if your friends are a lower level than you, there is an apprentice buffing system uh, which will make them slightly better, which means even if there is a bit of a level gap, which does happen in games like Diablo 3 really, really easily, you can still play with them and it won't just feel like you're carrying them through an area. So they will be serving some kind of purpose, which I really like. It's, it's one of the great shames about these kind of co-op loot fest games like Diablo, like Borderlands. If you even have a small level gap between your character and your friend's characters, you can start to lose the incentive to play with them and then it becomes a little bit less fun. And yeah, that is the Ultimate Evil Edition. It's, as I said, for people that have been waiting to play Reaper of Souls on a console, so you have access to the new stuff like Adventure Mode, new enemies, Crusader class, that kind of cool stuff. Or it's for people that have been waiting to play uh, Devil of Free on their next gen machine rather than Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3. That's about it. That's what this game offers, and you probably knew if you wanted to buy it before watching this video, didn't you? It looks all right. My understanding grows. Always believe! Now that's powerful. Subscribe.